Randy, kind of a brisk day for the opening day of Sebring 2014, but we're glad to see something bright, shiny, and new. Raven S20 is here. First time we've seen it in the flesh outside of seeing it in skin and bones at, uh, at Oshkosh. This thing started flying shortly before Christmas. Tell me what's happening. Well, you know, as we talked about it back in Oshkosh, we took the best of the Coyote and the best of the uh, Courier, and uh, we only had to create 15% of a new airplane, which turned out to be about 100% of the problem. But we got it done, and we got her in the air by December 22nd through the test program and out of phase one and on to a good start on the SLSA program. And what we're finding out is picking up the behavior and feel of the S7 Courier, maybe more so than the Coyote, but it has a very nice feel of its own as well. And what we're liking about it is that it's very ergonomically pleasing aircraft. Fun to get in and out of the cockpit, not a challenge. Very comfortable to cruise in, you know, it's nice and quiet and smooth and plenty of room to carry all the stuff people want to take with them nowadays. People marvel at the large baggage compartment as one of the big features, but there's also a lot of little ergonomic subtleties that help things like the drop door line and the sliding seats and the adjustable recline and our always famous and comfortable tension field upholstery system. What's the future for this airplane? When will it be available? What kind of pricing are you looking at? You obviously mentioned SLSA, so get another production airplane under your belt. That's a big deal. Yes, it is, but it gets easier as you repeat process. From firewall back, we're 25.5, and it's a very packed standard options, or standard features, I should say, with low option profile. All up and running, you're going to have maybe 45 to 60 and that wide variables because people go crazy on panels. If you look inside this one, it's a modest panel. I'm kind of going retro mm -hmm. and enjoying the old analog and just a simple GPS. What about complete flyaway? Complete flyaway, as you see it sitting here, would be 112. And that's with that panel. It's a full day VFR, GPS, transponder, radio, intercom, lights, and all that kind of stuff. So, When do you expect people to be able to stop by Hayes, Kansas and pick one up? Wing kits have been shipping. Now we're on to filling out those orders complete. And probably by the end of February, we should be in full delivery cycle. Not 100% steadfast on that. We're pretty bogged down with some good orders, so that's a good thing. The SLSA program, we're hightailing into that once we return to do the final part of the test program. And we should see certification in probably three months. And then the next SLSA will probably be out in four to six. Every design's a compromise, and what's interesting when you talk about the best of the six and the best of the seven, that's a lot of best, because those were both super little airplanes in a number of different ways. What stands out for you as a designer? I mean, let's face it, you build it for yourself, too. What do you like best? I like the feel of the aircraft. It's almost an intrinsic value, because I know the performance is going to be pretty much where the other planes are, but this one's a little bit better. What I like about how it makes me feel when I fly it, it makes me feel like I'm in a tough, really cool bush plane. The landing gear, very forgiving. It has a nice stance. You get in it. It's the same thing you feel when you try on a new car or the feel of the cockpit, you know, and how that feels. It gives you a good feeling. What are the numbers like from a standpoint of takeoff, landing, stole? And it's, it's pretty typical Rand stole performance, 200 feet or so. Uh, you're looking at high 30s at the bottom end of the ragged end of the stall. You're looking at uh, 115, 120 cruises, that kind of stuff. So. Payloads are 600 pounds, range four and a half hours. Good numbers. What's the default engine? The base engine's a Rotex 100 horse. Okay. The next one that's flying will be the 180 horse UL power. Okay. My personal one might be the Lycoming 160. Mm -hmm. Solely just to get the higher cruise speeds to get somewhere because I'm, I'm in the middle of the United States. If I want to go fly in Idaho, it's a six hour flight. I'd like to chop that down to maybe four. So I don't know if I'll get up that fast, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Oh, well, Randy, we can't wait to get our hands on this one. Hopefully uh, sometime this weekend we'll get a chance to sample it. And if it's anything like the other birds, we should have a good time. And I thank you much for your time. We'll look forward to that. Aero TV is brought to you by... Explore no limits flying in the newly FAA certified Sea Ray Elite Amphibious LSA. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Elite with a Rotax 914 turbocharged engine is equally at home on the ground, in the air, or on the water. Check it out at www.searay.com. Ready for a bold and never boring LSA? Check out the Renegade Little Rascal LS1 and LS2 fully aerobatic light sport aircraft with dependable fuel injected Lycoming AEIO 233 power. 
The aviation industry is far too automated and impersonal. Levels of care, service, and focus on customers have faded. Concierge provides premier customer care, leading our industry on a return to service. Find us at www.concierge.aero.